Welcome to my new Martin Strength channel. In this video, you will see my build of a barbell weightlifting platform designed to be used with a power rack. This is in my garage here. The first thing I wanted to do was to uh, lay down a moisture barrier just in case. There's a hot water heater over in the corner over there, and if it leaked water, I wouldn't want this uh, OSB to soak up any water, etc. Also, we park our car right next to this thing, so, you know, rainy days, it gets wet and water gets in the garage floor. So I'm placing uh, two uh, four by eight, three quarter inch OSB boards over the moisture barrier. And I'm folding the moisture barrier over. It's just basically a, a 6 mil plastic uh, 10 by 12 foot roll that I got. I'm taping it down here. The only thing I would do different next time <clears throat> is uh, I would probably make it a little, a little tighter and then maybe staple those down just for aesthetics. But I think it'll, I think it'll work. And then I'm putting another layer of OSB on top of that. And these are the same three quarter inch thick OSB boards. Alternating direction here. I then took a rubber mallet and uh, just kind of tapped those into place. Those OSB boards were a tongue and groove. See, there's, there's a groove on one of them. So now I'm going to screw those down um, with uh, some one and one quarter inch drywall screws. And you notice I did a one inch in and two inches to the left there because on top of this, I'm going to place portions of horse stall mats and those are going to be screwed down in the corner there uh, one at one inch intervals one inch by one inch towards and I did not want the horse mat screws to well hit these screws in the OSB here so basically I'm measuring off uh, two inches in by one inch over on each on each of these corners of the OSB here. And I also used a, uh, a countersink bit on the drill so the heads of the screws will um, be sunken down and be flush with the OSB. Now I'm just marking all the rest of the boards here. And I'm using a drill bit here to uh, drill in um, guide holes that the screws will go into. This is the countersink bit here. Countersinking all the guide holes. And then finally using the one and one quarter inch drywall screws to secure the OSB And I set the tension on the um, the drill to uh, fairly light so it would ratchet down and not strip anything out. I 
I'll probably put some kind of heater over in the corner back there where those fishing rods are. Okay, that's one of the horse stall mats. Horse stall mats are uh, four foot by six foot. I just laid it there as a guide because that's basically the width of what I'm going to be placing on each side. Right now I'm marking six inches in on this uh, four by eight birch plywood here. Um, the reason is this is the front of the lifting platform and I only want it three feet wide in the front because I just wanted a little bit of extra space for the horse mat for when I'm dropping the weights down so I, I don't want to bang up the board. Not sure if that'll be an issue or not, but I don't need four feet wide. So this is basically four foot long. The center will be three feet wide there. I started out with a with a handsaw, not sure why, but uh, finished up the other side with a circular saw. Just trimming off the board here. There we go. All right, once I had this centered, I'm doing uh, markings of one inch in, one inch across for some guide holes. Basically, it's the same process. I'll drill the guide holes and then use the countersink bit to create a divot for the head of the the same one and one quarter inch drywall screws. I'm just doing the corners here because uh, towards the back section there I'm going to bolt the power rack down there and that's going to hold that board really secure. So those are just the guide holes there. And the screws are going in, so they're flush. Actually, they're slightly, they're slightly lower than the board. What I'm not showing here is uh, a couple of the drill bits I used for the guide holes actually broke off and I had to pull the, the plywood up and pull those out with uh, a pair of vice grips. There we go. All right, now I'm <clears throat> lightly sanding this nice piece of uh, birch plywood. It's actually a really nice looking surface there. I like the grain, the little knots and everything. So it's making it nice and smooth. It's not rocket science, but I, I did want it to look look fairly decent. And I was like, hey, I'm kind of getting into this.
That's basically a pad of uh, sandpaper. I don't remember what grit, but it was fairly fine. Smoothing off the edges there, all the sharp edges of the of the board. Cleaning it off a little bit. I vacuumed off the whole surface. Just to get all the dust off of there. Or most of the dust off of there. All right, yeah, wiped it down. This is a four by six horse mat here. I measured it to fit in that slot. Use a chalk line and now I'm using a, um, a blade cutter here just to cut right along that line, to make a first cut across. Once that first cut is across there, then you just kind of hold it down and then just work it a little bit more and eventually it'll, it'll go all the way through. Seemed to work pretty well. There we go, see. Okay, essentially do that three more times and you have your four pieces there. Now do a little bit more cleaning. There we go. All right, this is the first coat of uh, water-based polyurethane. I'm using a matte finish. I didn't want it super shiny, so this... Plus, I think this one might have a slight texture to it. This is the first coat. I did three coats. I did one coat here, let it dry for two hours in between each coat. The final coat, I ac actually um, added a little bit thicker than these. These are these first two coats are, are thin, thin coats here. Fully covered, but thin coats in coating. Not exactly sure how long each coat took to do to to paint on there, but it's probably about fifteen minutes, I would imagine. Don't worry, I only filmed the first coat. So you don't have to suffer through two more of these.
All right, this is after three coats of the water-based polyurethane have dried. Just placing the portions of a horse mat back into position. I actually left the uh, factory cut sides towards the uh, the birch in the center just because it was just a such a better fit and kind of the slightly rougher sides that I cut facing out. Um, I just like the look of that better. Pretty much I'm sliding those in and I'm only going to put in uh, three of the uh, one and one quarter inch drywall screws into the outside corners of each of the portions of horse mat. And I have the torque set really low on the drill bit here and just kind of goes in. Zzz. I don't want it to go in too far because the horse mat is not as hard as the wood. After I cut the portions of horse mat, there was some of that blue chalk from the chalk line on them. It came right off with just some water, some warm water and a rag, just wiped them down. These horse mats uh, really clean off easily. They're essentially made from recycled tires. Some people have said they've had problems with them when they first get them, that they have a really strong rubbery smell. Um, I guess I lucked out. These ones did not smell. And there it is. This is the finished uh, platform here. If you have any questions, uh, just let me know.